Hey, party people, people who love to party. It's me, Mr. Bim, here to talk to you today about circles and specifically central angles and circles and the intercepted arc measure as well as inscribed angles and their intercepted arc measure. Now that sounds like a whole bunch of word sandwiches with a side of word soup, but trust me, we got this. When you're looking at a circle, we got a bunch of parts. And specifically, when we start cutting the circle up into little pieces, all these parts have names. So if you look at my first one, this thing right here that's going from the center to the edge, that bad boy right there is known as a radius. The plural is radii. And what happens when you have two radii that go to the edge of a circle from the center is you get yourself a little angle in here, just like we're used to having outside of circles. Now this angle is called a central angle because it's from the center of the circle, okay? Now what happens from here with this central angle is it intercepts an arc. And that arc, if I can highlight it for you, is this piece right here. That's an arc. And we have two ways of measuring arcs. And we're gonna look at just one way of measuring them today, which is arc measure, not arc length. We are not going to be messing with that. So our arc measure is all about this degree right here. The arc measure for an arc is the same as the central angle measure. So this guy in here is 36 degrees. We say that this guy here is also 36 degrees. And the way that we write that is M of arc AB. So this is the measure of arc AB. It gets a little curved line up above it, like a frowny face and an M in front to say that we're dealing with the measure, it's equal to 36 degrees. Buckets. Now there's another part of this that we can also use. We can also talk about the angle. The angle and this thing are equal. And the way that we would denote that is with an M, the angle sign, and then we would go in, or pardon me, out, in, and then out in order to get this angle. So let me give this another letter. That'll be C for us. This is gonna be angle ACB, and it's exactly the same as its intercepted arc. They're the same. The only other real thing that we got going on as the trash can, or I should say the trash man outside squeals all over the place. The only other thing we got going on is, well, what's the measure of the rest of this arc? Because not only do we have little arcs to measure, we have gigantic big arcs to measure. Specifically, this is called a minor arc and the bigger one is a major arc. Well, we even write it different. We say that this is the measure of arc A, D, we hit that back one, B makes it the big one. Because if we just said A, B, and we were like, oh, I'm just gonna go from A to B, you might not realize that it's supposed to be the big one versus the small one. We might have to put the word major in front of it. This guy is gonna be equal to, well, a circle is altogether 360 degrees. So I'm just gonna minus off that 36. And that leaves me with 324 degrees, voila. There it is. We found the arc measure of this guy back here. Here, let me highlight it so that you can see it very well. Highlighters. Also, I love getting to use highlighters. Boop. Minor arc in pink, major arc in blue. That's it. Not too bad, right? Like, that's the long and the short. We can do all sorts of stuff. We can make it harder. But first, let's see if we've just got it down. Let's make sure that we are solid on this. I've got, ooh, I need a center. Let's make this C again. We're just going to keep making the center C for center of a circle. Center. I've got a 130 right here. So if I wanna know the arc measure of EF, I just go back to this and I'm like, oh, the measure of EF is the same as the measure of angle ECF, which is 130. Now we don't necessarily need to write that it's the same. We can just skip to the measure of EF is equal to 130. I was just making sure you knew that the reason why is because of that angle in the middle. Hopefully you're listening to this and not just watching it so you're not confused as bleep right now. Now I want to go find the major arcs measure. So that would be the measure of arc 
EGF. And that's going to be equal to 360 minus 130, which is 230. Voila. There you go. That's all the math that needs to be done. 130, I could put a 130 out here for the arc. And I could put a 230 over here for this arc. And we're good to go. Mr. Beal isn't going to get more complicated than that. I mean, yeah, sure. But this basic concept is really just it. Like, this is the concept. You can throw a whole lot more lines in there and be confused about where things are going. But if you're just dealing with a couple of radii intercepting the circumference of a circle, circumference is just this big old ring, then you're just dealing with, oh, well, what's this and this? So check this out. I've got right now, I've got an angle of X minus three degrees. And it looks like I've got an arc out here of 4x plus 23 degrees. That's this arc. Let me label it for you. Big pink style. Wow, wow, wow. Bam. So how are we going to figure out what x is? Well, if this angle was x minus 3, this arc is also x minus 3. Yes, Mr. Beal, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. But these arcs together have to add together to make 360 because that's how many degrees are in a circle in total. So 4x plus 23 plus x minus 3 equals 360. We do a little math cleanup, some pretty easy stuff. We've got 5x plus 20 is equal to 360. Mr. Bill, that was too hard. No, that can't be too hard. You, you got you to gotta work on that. Minus 20, minus 20. I've got 5x is equal to 340. Jeez, that's a gigantic number, right? I've got x is equal to, hmm, maybe that's not so gigantic. 68. 68 degrees is x. But how big are the arcs and the angles and whatnot? We, we just plug it back in. 68 minus 3 is 65. So both this arc measure and this angle are going to be 65. And this leftover piece, I could plug in 68, times it by 4, and add 23. Or I could just subtract 65 from 360, which would give me 295. Staying alive. Living in a beehive. Talking some jive. So that's central angles. Once again, central angles. Central. They're equal. It's very nice. Now inscribed angles. A little bit different. You'll notice that the inscribed angle, instead of being in the center, it gets pulled all the way back to here. And what that does is that actually opens up this a little bit wider. If I can compare it to the first one that we did, these guys are both 36 degrees. And I measured them, like beforehand. I made sure this worked out. This is 36, and this is 36. There's 36 degrees worth of arc measure. But if you compare this to this thing right here, they do not even look the same. And they are not, 100%. This bad boy is smaller than this bad boy right here, significantly so. Well, how much smaller? And therein lies the secret, the secret formula. If you've got the measure of angle L, N, M, and right now that is 36 degrees, and I want the measure of arc L, M, I'm going to take this 36 and I'm going to times it by two. That's all I've got to do. It's this thing or the angle measure. Times two. So this bad boy will be a total of 72 degrees. That's all. That's all we got to do. 72. So literally folks, we've got one of two things happening. Either it's in the center and it's equal, or it goes all the way to the side. And it's two times as big over here as it is right here. That's all. So check this out. We got this one now. And we've backed up this 130 degrees into a corner. And we're trying to find this bad boy right here, this whole big arc measure. Well, I take my, ooh, my angle measure. PQO, which is 130. And if I want to find the measure of PQ, or I should say PO. Now take a look at this, guys. That is definitely a major arc. 
but I'm treating it like a minor arc. I'm only using two letters. The whole major arc, minor arc things, those are not hard, fast rules. Right now, it would be more obvious to use just these two letters to mean that stuff, and maybe these three letters to make to name this minor arc back here. It's just kind of the way it works sometimes. This is going to be equal to whatever this was times two. So two times 130 is 260 degrees. There it is. You just times it by two. That's all. So what if you got to go backwards? What if you are moving backwards through time, a la tenant, and you needed to know how big this angle was? Well, we're just going to do the, the inverse of what we were doing here. We know that we've got the measure of RS. That arc is equal to 130. This is actually two times the measure of the angle, so I'm going to need to divide that bad boy by two. So the measure of R, pardon me, get out of there. The measure of angle RTS is equal to 130 divided by two. This guy, the big part cut in half makes the angle, which is 65 degrees. And that's the beginning, guys. Inscribed and central angles. Hope that wasn't too much for you. Oh, if I can give you one more thing. These bad boys right here are called chords. They are not radii. They are chords. And a chord touches the circumference of a circle twice, and it doesn't punch through. It's just going to stay there. All right, guys, that's it for this time. Please stay safe out there. World crazy.